Hello, welcome to this video where we look at calculating the area between two curves. We're going to start off simple where we have a function f of x and a function g of x between two x values a and b. We're interested in measuring the area between these two curves. Now f of x is going to be greater than g of x here. And just like when we were calculating area under the graph of a function and above the x-axis, we're going to do the same thing we did there where we use rectangles where we have two dimensions, right? We have the, the width of the rectangle and we have the height of the rectangle. The width is still delta x. Okay, you wanna use an equal width. Um, we're gonna approximate it, finite number of rectangles. This picture has about eight of them there. The key is the height. How tall is that rectangle? We're gonna go up f of x, but then we're gonna go down g of x, f of x minus g of x. We're gonna subtract the two and that would be our height. We got to decide whether we want to integrate, um, uh, evaluate the the rectangle height at the left end point, the right end point, or the midpoint. But this is a good approximation if we use about eight rectangles and we decide to use the midpoint. That's one way to do it. Now we don't want only an approximation; we want an exact answer, and we're going to get that by increasing the number of rectangles that we have. And so. We'll have a Riemann sum. That's just a, a symbol to represent the number of rectangles, eight, six, manageable from a human's perspective. Um, anything above that, a computer should be doing. F of xi star minus g of xi star is the height. Delta x is the width. And as the number of rectangles increases, the delta x gets smaller, and we'll have the exact area between the two curves. Okay, capital A is the area, the region is S. The area of S can be measured using this Riemann sum, the limit as n goes to infinity, the sum i equals one to n, f of xi star minus g of xi star, all of that times delta x. That's a Riemann sum, which leads us into an integral. Okay, we have the following expression for the area, f of x minus g of x. That's what we're integrating, dx from A to B. There's our picture again. There's our statement exactly of what we're measuring. It's just upper function minus lower function. That's it. Now, not every question can be done like this. And you always have to be aware of what your upper function is, or what your lower function is. It might switch on you. So you got to get a good drawing of the picture, but some of them might be turned on its side. Take this and turn it on its side. You'd be in trouble trying to do it in terms of X. And so instead of slicing vertically, what we can do is slice horizontally. And so we could have functions of y. X is a function of y and g is a func f is a function of y and g is a function of y, both x equals, and have a rightmost function and a leftmost function, and then have two vertical, um, two horizontal lines, uh, y equals c and y equals d. Just turn the whole thing on its side. You don't always have to integrate with respect to x. In case you be better if you integrate with respect to y. But like the other one was upper function minus lowest function, this is going to be rightmost function minus leftmost function. Okay. All right, I'm going to do an example of the first setup. And then in the next video, you'll see an example of this setup. All right, great. We have a parabola and we have a line. You might not be given the graph. You're going to have to graph it yourself sometimes. So be sure you can you know, graph simple functions. Um, what, what do we need to know about this parabola? It opens up. Uh, if we knew where its intercepts were, that would be great too. Set it equal to zero, and you'll find you could factor out an x and have zero and two as your intercepts. Okay, that, that's a line who has a y-intercept of four, a slope of one. And so that's our region we're trying to find the area of. We want to slice vertically. We have an upper function who's the line, lower function who's the parabola, and we'll just be subtracting them. Well, what about our bounds? Where do we start this at? Where do we end this at? It looks like we're going to do that where these curves intersect each other. Well, we're going to have to do some algebra for that. Where does x squared minus 2x equal to x plus 4? We have ourselves a quadratic equation to solve. Set it equal to 0. Thankfully, this is factorable. And we'll have our two x's, positive 4 and negative 1. Those will be the bounds. 
and we'll just be integrating upper function minus lower function line minus parabola be careful use parentheses so you can distribute negative properly and it's best if you can write it in decreasing order you don't have to but there we go negative x squared we have our x and then plus the 2x so 3x and then plus the 4. Fundamental theorem of calculus says go find the antiderivative and plug in the bounds this is just be polynomial antiderivative just power rule in reverse add 1 to the exponent divide by the same thing negative x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2 plus 4x fundamental theorem of calculus says we got to plug in the upper bound and subtract what we get by plugging in the lower bound so let's do that be careful all right that's a negative it's the opposite of 4 who we cube um, we cube first and then we take the opposite actually that's how it should be said but then when it comes to the negative 1 though we, we cube that negative 1 first and then we take the opposite and so one ends up negative the other one ends up positive so just be careful um, and don't think that you have to like do all of the calculation on the left and do all of the calculation on the right and then put them together they can be combined just um, simplify as much as you can before you go don't multiply 3 times 16 in that second term for the first um, for the upper limit use the 2 to cancel the 16 and make it an 8 you'll get 24 so we have 24 we have 16 we can put those together and call it 40 the last term and the second one that's a negative 4 but we subtract so that's a positive 4 all that together whole number wise will be 44 we have a 64 over 3 who's negative a 1 over 3 who we subtract from that since they have the same denominator let's put them together as 65 over 3 negative 44 and negative 3 halves common denominator is 6 so we have to double 65 we have to take 44 times 6 and we have to triple the 3 altogether 264 take away the 139 gives us exactly 125 over 6. okay in the next video we'll do an example of each again uh, one one of x and one of y it's just upper curve minus lower curve in general or right curve minus left curve you got to get a good drawing you got to know which is which and uh, you'll be fine. No worries. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. You can find me at calcoach.com. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.